Welcome to this presentation on dermatological ultrasound of alopecia in heritage plant. My name is Fernando Altajemra Roldan and I'm a dermatologist from Hospital Universitario Puerta de Hierro Majadahonda in Madrid, Spain. This is a very novel field of dermatological ultrasound and I hope you find it interesting for your clinical practice. First of all, to declare no conflict of interest regarding this communication. We will deal with economy of the hair follicle, the technical aspects of follicular ultrasonography, the ultrasonography patterns of common alopecia, and ultrasonography of hair transplant. First of all, I would like to remember the structure or, or the anatomy of the hair. You, in the hair, you can distinguish two important parts. The hair follicle, that is where the hair tract is born, and the, the, the hair tract. The hair tract is the final product of the hair follicle. Associated to hair follicle, we have the sebaceous gland that is very relevant in the path epipathology of acne, for example, and the erectile muscle of, of the hair. This erectile muscle of the, of the hair is very important because sometimes we find some tumors of this the, of this muscle and it has some implications regarding the uh, physiopathology of some uh, hair diseases. You have to remember that the hair follicle goes along three main phases: the anogen phase at the beginning, then a catagen phase, and a telogen phase. The longer phase is anogen phase, are more or less one two years. Catagen is two, three weeks, and telogen is uh, two, three months. Then most of the hair, the, in, the, of the hair follicles are in the anagen phase in the, in, the, in the scalp. This is relevant because when we are dealing with, uh, trust, uh, with alterations on the hair follicle cycle, such as effluvium, we have to take into account that these hair follicles should be at some depth regarding this uh, this uh, phase. The internal structure of the hair shaft has three parts, the cuticula, the cortex, and the medulla. This is the normal structure in medullated hairs. The exploration techniques is based mainly on, on having a big heap of gel, more or less 0.5, one, one centimeter of, of gel, the probe must be parallel to the hair tract because the, the insertion of the hair follicle is oblique and we should do a kind of funny movement to detect the hair follicle and track into the dermis. According to Dr. Bosman, the hair follicle may have two kind of structures, a trilaminar in the medullated uh, hair shafts and bilaminar in the uh, non-medullated non hair shafts. Depending on the type of hair shafts, most of the hair in the scalp are trilaminar, while as in other locations and in, and in uh, alopecia androgenetica, it would be bilaminar. This is the structure, the structure of the hair shaft. You see this bilaminar structure in, in a non-medulated uh, hair shaft. This hair shaft goes in a oblique way, in an oblique direction into the dermis in the follicle, the hair follicle that surrounds the hair shaft. Here you can see these oblique hypocord lines, fine hypocord lines that are, that are and corresponds to uh, hair follicles in the anagen phase. This is normal hair follicle with a more or less uh, um, uh, thickness of 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4 millimeters. This is normal thickness of the hair follicles. This would be a schema of the normal hair anatomy. What happens when we have inflammation of these hair follicles? As you see in this schema, there are some changes. The hair follicles are thickened, tend to be more hypochoic, and tend to present uh, artifacts such as uh, uh, the shadowing, and sometimes uh, uh, an, an increased in the signal and the posterior signal an enhancement on the, uh, on, on this signal with uh, increased or decreased vascularization. 
what would what we would see in a report in alopecia patients? We we would go to scan and see if we have all the skin elements to see if there is a plasia or a mertomas, the presence of eye or absence of hair follicles. If there is hair, no hair follicles, there will be no hair. The hair shaft aspect, whether it is glomerular or trilaminar, the length, length of the follicles and the thickness of the follicle, the vascularization, and very important, to compare with clinical healthy areas. We will go along the most common alopecia in, in the in the in the in the human. The most common alopecia would be congenital, non-scaring, scaring, and other causes. This is very important because non-scaring alopecia have, in most cases, the ability of recovery of this hair. In the case of scaring alopecia, the, the possibility of recovery of the hair is limited are not in most of the cases impossible. We have another causes that may cause this kind of alopecia. Regarding the congenital causes, the most important is aplasia cutis. In aplasia cutis, we would see no follicles, homogeneous strata, and we should look for absence of skin, muscle, and bone structures to, uh, to discard the possibility of an underlying malformation. This is, for example, what we would see in a plasia cunis congenita. If we compare normal appearing area with a plasia cutis, we see that we miss this strata here, this gallia that is not here. We have a missing strata, and no here, no here we we can see the hair follicles and no hair follicles here. In alopecia areata, what we uh, would see would be this thickened follicles, you see here, with normal length. Hmm? Most of them are reach the subcutaneous area of the skull. Thickened follicles, normal length, and not increased vascularization. This alopecia is non scarring then it has a, the possibility of recovery. This is very important because sometimes we cannot distinguish alopecia areata from trichotillomania. Trichotillomania is a psychiatric disorder in which the person tends to de destroy his own uh, hair follicles. This is very common in children, trichotillomania. You have here an example of trichotillomania with destruction of hair follicles, and very, very thick in hair follicles, that is completely different, different to what you've seen before. The most common alopecia is alopecia androgenetica. Alopecia androgenetica is a, a hormone condition alopecia due to an increased uh, sensibility to the dihydrotestosterone, that is the final product of uh, trans final transformation of testosterone. This alopecia androgenetica has thickened follicles, shortened follicles, and normal vascularization as you see in this structure here that it corresponds to hair follicle. This is a case of female alopecia androgenetica. Regarding scarring uh, alopecia, the most important is folliculitis subfolliculitis. This is very common in phototypes for black, uh, black, skin, uh, black skin. And we would see is a distortion and thickened follicular anatomy with sometimes posterior enhancement and increased vascularization. This is the distortion of the normal structure of hair follicle mm, that can be observed in this kind of patients. Some, uh, some uh, immunological diseases such as lupus tend to have this kind of alopecia. We have this follicular thickening with shortening and increased vascularization. This is very typical of lupus alopecia. And some immunologic or collagen diseases have this kind of follicular involvement. Dime, Almudena. Dime, Almudena. Dime, cariño. Sí, dime, cariño. Te oigo, te oigo. Almudena. ¿Me oyes?
I'm Lena. A ver. Cago en la puta. Dime, Lena. Dime. Sí, ¿no? Vale, yo pienso que de noche. Perfecto, Lena. Sin, sin problema, ya, ya nos, nos organizamos. Sí, no, no, que sea ya este domingo, Modena. No, para no retrasarlo. Eh, como si dice a las 3 de la mañana. Pero que se vaya. Pues esto se está poniendo complicado. Ven, muchas gracias, nena. Un besito. Another very interesting. Another very common alopecia is frontal fibrosing alopecia, or leaking planus. This is a variety of leaking planus of the hair. In, in fibro, frontal fibrosing alopecia, we will have follicular thickening, shortening, and increased vascularization. In very active lesions, we will have this increased vascularization. As the, the disease progresses, we tend to see less vascularization. And regarding hair transplant, we can monitor whether the uh, hair implant is in inflammatory phase or we have, are losing this hair in insertion. This is the usual technique of uh, follicular structures unit. We remove the hair follicles from the occipital area and we make the implant in the frontal area you see, you see here. And this is the final result, very final result from a colleague of us, Dr. Baño. We can see or we can detect the hair follicle survival because we can observe the inflammatory state, the hormonal st state and the vascularization through ultrasonography. This is, for example, uh, uh, an, an, an example of implant, hair follicle implant here. You see here the inflammation and the vascularization of these implants. This is a good sign when we see this kind of fine vascularization around the hair follicle and it's predictive of survival. To conclude, we, we can see that hair follicle anatomy can be studied with ultrasound, that different diseases have different patterns which can be of help to proper diagnosis in alopecia, and in, that ultrasound is an excellent tool to offer objective prognosis and treatment guidance to the clinician. Thank you very much for your attention.